In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a guide for every single awakened fruit and blocks fruits, as well as some secret tricks for each fruit. Okay, so first of all, we have the easiest raid in the whole game. I'm talking about the flame raid. And the flame raid is known by everybody in the community as the easiest raid that you want to do if you want to grind out some fragments. But the flame fruit itself is probably one of the worst awakened fruits in the game. It costs a total of 14,500 fragments to fully awaken your flame fruit. But to be fair, it does make the ability look way cooler. So for the first ability, it's called Blue Fire Bullets and this just changes the unawakened version's abilities to blue, so it looks much cooler. And the second ability is called Prominence Burn. And for this one, you just shoot out a burst of damage. And this is a medium range attack, so it's gonna come in handy for PvP. And now we got Flaming Vortex, and this is exactly what it sounds like. It's kind of like a pillar made out of fire, but you have to be really close to the player if you want to use this one. And now we got Hell's Core, which is just a copy of a Spirit Bomb from Dragon ball so this one is pretty cool in my opinion and then finally we got the f ability the movement ability and this one's called rocket flight and basically what this does is it increases the speed of the normal flight mode for the flame fruit making it 10 times better to use really good things about this fruit is that every single attack literally does over 4,000 damage when the fruit is awakened and this fruit is really decent for pvp but not that good for grinding and every single one of the flames awakened abilities break observation making it even better for pvp but a bad thing about it is that its v move is really predictable and anybody can dodge it using flash step i mean all you have to do is click one key okay so now we got the awakened ice fruit and to fully awaken the ice fruit it also costs 14,500 fragments and the awakened abilities for this fruit are just really cool first up we got an ability called cold storm and this ability is just a better version of ice shards it literally spawns in a frozen tornado and the second ability is just a better version of ice surge making it cover way more damage distance and doing way more damage and you won't believe what the ice bird turns into it literally turns into a frozen dragon making it super epic and the next ability is called absolute zero and it freezes every enemy that's close to you and stuns them for a certain amount of time making them unable to move and then when you awaken the ice fruit you also get a special f ability and this one's called ice skating which literally just lets you skate around on land which is really op and makes you move 10 times faster good things about the awakened version is that it makes it really easy to farm levels and when it comes to the trident for the ice fruit you don't need to upgrade your sword points to do damage you just have to upgrade your fruits basically giving you a free sword one bad thing about this fruit is that when you use the absolute zero ability you cannot use any other ability in the game and you have to wait for it to completely defrost and now we have the awakened sand fruit when awakened the sand fruit is really good for grinding and has a high combo potential for bounty hunter but the fruit only costs 420,000 belly making it a really good choice for bounty hunting and this fruit also takes 14,500 fragments to fully awaken and when awakened the first ability of the sand fruit is called desert blade and this just shoots out a bunch of pillars from underneath the floor dealing high amounts of damage to players in the area the next ability is called sand coffin and it basically raises a ball of sand into the air and if any players are standing nearby it just buries them in the sand the third ability is called sandstorm and this is similar to one of the flame abilities it's just a sand tornado that pushes players high up into the sky and deals a buttload of damage the fourth ability is called deep sand and this is basically you kind of shoot a sand bullet and it just flings your enemies away and deals a huge amount of damage and last of all we got the movement ability which is called tornado flight this is similar to the flame fruits flight ability you kind of just fly around and you can control exactly where you go a really good thing about this fruit is that it has excellent combo potential when awakened so it's good for bosses so when you're on those boss quests or you're just grinding out bosses this is definitely a fruit you want to choose from a bad thing about it is that you take double damage in water unless of course you have the shark v2 or v3 the x move from the sand fruit only targets one player so if you're fighting against two players and you attack one of them the other one can just deal a buttload of damage to you while you're standing still but overall the sand fruit is also really decent and it's definitely worth the cheap price now we have the awakened dark fruit and now we're really getting into the juicy ones to completely awaken the dark fruit you also need 14,500 fragments but keep in mind that this fruit is so much better wow. than the other fruits on this list so far so all of the awakened abilities for this fruit are just really cool starting off with dimensional slash this one is exactly what it sounds like it shoots off a long range blade attack dealing huge amounts of damage to players standing in the way and also literally cuts through everything even buildings and the second ability we have it is kind of similar to the spider fruit if you hold it down it just does repeated amounts of damage to players in your way and the third one is called endless hole and what this one basically does is it just 
traps all enemies standing next to you when you use it. It creates a circle around you and everyone standing close to you takes huge amounts of damage and gets stunned. Next up is World of Darkness and this one is the coolest ability by far. If you hold it down, it creates a huge black ball above your head and when you throw it to the ground, it shatters the floor and deals a buttload of damage to any player standing there. And the movement ability is called Ghastly Step and I'm not gonna lie, this is just a ripoff of Flash Step. So if you have Flash Step unlocked with the movement ability for this fruit, you basically have two flash steps, which is pretty cool. The really good thing about this fruit is it has a lot of stuns, making it really good for people that play fruits and swords. So once your enemies are stunned, you can just jump in there and slash them to death. A bad thing about this fruit is that the Awaken X and C abilities do not deal a huge amount of damage unless they're held down, but in the time you're standing still, players can literally demolish you. And you definitely don't want to be using this fruit for any long range battles because most of its abilities are close to medium range. But don't forget that the fruit is kind of overpowered at close and medium range so that's kind of good thing about it and now we got the light fruit the literal fastest fruit in the whole of blocks fruits and to completely awaken this fruit you also need 14,500 fragments when you awaken your light fruit the passive ability changes from a light blade to a light spear and the light spear just looks so much cooler and the first ability turns into a divine arrow and basically what this is is you pull out a bow made out of light and it charges three times and then you can shoot three whole arrows to do damage to your enemy. The second move is called Hand of the Emperor, and this is just Barrage of Light, which is the unawakened version of this fruit, and it just upgrades the ability and takes it to another level. And Reflection Kick changes into Light Speed Destroyer, and it basically just makes this kick 10 times cooler. Even the effects get so much better. Just look at this. Skybeam Barrage changes into Wrath of God, and let me just tell you, Wrath of God is just so much cooler and is so much better version of this. The radius of the circle to deploy the beams gets much bigger making it a lot easier to hit your target so one bad thing about the initial light fruit is that when you start flying with the light flight you cannot nope. change your direction but once you awaken your fruit, the ability changes into Shining Light, you can literally change the direction of the way you fly, which makes this movement ability one of the best in the whole game, and I definitely recommend you use this if you want to get to places really fast. It also has really high damage and a good amount of long range attacks, making a hybrid fruit which is good for grinding and PvP. But one good slash bad thing about this is that if you don't have good aim then you cannot use this fruit to its full potential, taking away a bit of its ability. But overall it's just a really good fruit and the fastest fruit in the game so you definitely want to get your hands on this one and next up we have the awakened magma fruit and this is one of the most popular awakenings in the whole of blocks fruits this fruit also requires 14,500 fragments to fully awaken and a bonus of this fruit is obviously lava immunity you literally don't take damage from any lava around the map so once the fruit is awakened your first move changes from a magma clap to a magma shower and let me just tell you this looks really crazy and it deals a buttload of damage and it also leaves these little lava pools around which also deal extra damage to players and next up is volcanic assault this is kind of like your q dash ability but just so much better and with a nice touch of magma to it the great magma hound is an ability that just sends a ball of lava flying at your opponent and it leaves a little puddle behind dealing immense amounts of damage next up we have volcanic storm which is also a really cool ability and really good for dealing out damage and then finally we have the movement ability which is beast ride and it's exactly what it sounds like you just just fly around in a magma skull and once you get off it you can crash the skull somewhere making it a good movement ability and a pretty good ability for dealing damage good thing about the awakened magma is that this fruit is extremely versatile due to its many passive abilities i mean one of them is literally letting the player walk on water that's just op and it also has the highest damage out of every fruit in the game if you add the puddle damage and on top of that it's an elemental fruit making it really easy to grind with and the main drawbacks of this is when the fruit is not in its awakened origins so you want to awaken this fruit as soon as you have the chance to. Now we're getting into the more expensive awakened fruits. We have the quake fruit and this fruit costs 17,000 fragments to fully awaken, making it the costliest on this list so far. For the first ability called Fatal Demolisher, it deals this world breaking ability and it just looks super sick. Like, I mean, it literally cracks the world itself and launches your enemy really far back. 
And next up, we got Air Crusher, which shoots a huge ball of electricity towards your opponent, sending them flying in any direction you choose. But keep in mind, rubber users are immune to this, so you probably don't want to use it against them. Next up, we got Spatial Shockwave. And what this does is, if you hold down this ability, you can make everything around you take damage. It's literally spatial. And this move is really good for grinding because you can deal damage to multiple targets at once. Now we got Seaquake, the most expensive ability, and this one is just crazy. I mean, it literally launches four tsunamis towards the player, making it really overpowered and really difficult to dodge. So it's basically guaranteed damage. Good things about this fruit is it has really large hitboxes, so it's almost impossible to miss the players you're fighting against. And every single one of its moves breaks observation hockey, making it way more valuable in PvP. And it has medium mastery requirements, meaning it, you won't have to sit there grinding for ages to unlock all the abilities of the fruit. A bad thing about this fruit is that it has no movement abilities, so if you're using this fruit, you probably want to have something else to move with. And if you don't run on a really good computer, keep in mind this fruit literally shakes your screen when you use every single ability, so it's gonna lag a lot. Next up is the best fruit for grinding in the whole game. I'm talking about the Awakened Buddha. And this fruit costs 14,500 fragments to fully awaken. And the first Awakened ability basically makes your Buddha transformation literally three times bigger, making you a literal giant. It makes you bigger than some buildings. I mean, I would call that gigantic. The next ability we have is Heavenly Impact, and this basically just smashes the ground and creates a huge light, dealing immense amounts of damage to players that are on the spot. Next, we got a Light of Annihilation, which is just a Kamehameha, and it looks really cool. And you can aim it anywhere from medium to long range, and it deals a buttload of damage. Next up, we got Twilight of the Gods, and this one just looks really crazy. It takes you into the air, and you just start dishing out damage to everything nearby. You can literally demolish players players in 5 seconds with this move. And finally, we got the movement ability, which is called Retribution Dash. And this one is kind of decent for movement ability. I mean, it's literally just a dash. But a bonus to this is that if you dash into a player, you literally pick them up, making them unable to do anything and just slam them into the ground. And the thing about this fruit is that it's extremely versatile. It works perfectly even if you're a sword, fruit, or combat style main. And even though this fruit specializes in grinding, I mean, it's also pretty decent for PvP. But you probably want to stick to not using this fruit for PvP because I I mean, look at your transformation, man. You're gigantic, making you a literal glowing target for other players to kill. And your hitbox also increases, meaning you literally 800% bigger than a normal player, so you're definitely gonna get targeted if it's a free-for-all. And did I also mention that this Buddha fruit has no combo potential, so it's not really that good for PvP at the end of the day. Now we have the Awakened String Fruit, <coughs> Spider Fruit. And the Spider Fruit costs 17,300 fragments to fully awaken, making it a pretty expensive expensive fruit. The first ability is actually similar to a sword attack. It deals a consecutive amount of slashes towards your enemy and this is probably better off used at close range because the slashes don't really go that far. Next up we got Silk Prison which is basically what it says. It just boxes your enemy in a Silk Prison and deals some damage to them. Not really that good for damage but it's pretty good for immobilizing your enemy. Next up we have the C move which is called Eternal White and this one just looks really crazy. It basically pulls out a bunch of huge strings from the floor and just rams them into wherever you're aiming. And these deal a really good amount of damage, so this is definitely going to be useful for PvP. Next up is Heavenly Punishment, and this ability is just really cool because it actually copies your hockey color. So if your hockey is rainbow, this ability literally becomes rainbow, which makes it really cool. In the direction that you're looking in, it just starts spamming your enemy with multiple attacks, and they literally just have to stand there and take all that damage, making it really good for PvP. Last up is the movement ability, Spider's Highway, and this ability literally makes you like Spider-Man. I mean, you literally just swing around on webs, making it really cool to watch. But movement-wise, it's pretty decent, but it's definitely not the best in the game. A really good thing about this fruit is that it deals a huge amount of damage, and most of its abilities have stun attacks, so it's going to be really good for combos. But one downside to this move is that if you're running on a bad computer, you probably don't want to use this, because all of these moves cost immense amounts of lag to you and the player you're fighting. So if you don't have that good of a PC and you run into a spider fruit user, I mean, it's just better to run away. Next up, we have the Awakened Phoenix Fruit, and this fruit costs 18,500 fragments to fully awaken. And the transformation for this ability looks really badass. So the first ability, which is called Cremation Cannon, is kind of similar to a Quake ability. It just shoots a spiraling ball of 
blue flames towards your enemies, and it leaves behind a little bit of fire, so you even get that extra damage. Next up is blue flames, and this ability kind of looks like a blue light fruit. In a selected area, it just brings up a glowing orb, and it just does a bunch of damage. Next up is flame exodus, and this ability is one of the coolest by far, and it's probably gonna be laggy for you guys out there with a bad PC. So, once you dash into a player, it just sends a spiral up into the sky and slams them back down into the floor, dealing a huge amount of damage and looking really cool at the same time. Next up is Blazing Plumage, and this is the transformation ability. Your avatar basically just transforms into a flying phoenix and you can fly around wherever you want and the transformation looks really sick. And now we have the movement ability, which is called Swift Flight, and you get this automatically when you transform. It's just a pair of phoenix wings and you can fly around wherever you want with them. And we also have a passive ability for this fruit, which is kind of similar to the portal fruit. In whatever direction you click, you just dash and lunge into a player and deal a buttload of damage. But the main abilities of the fruit are just much better, so you probably just want to stick to using those in PvP. A really good thing about this fruit is that it's really hard to kill a player using this fruit. And the reason for that is that every phoenix player has an ability called regeneration flames and these things are just really OP and they regenerate a player's health even better than the angel abilities making it one of the most overpowered healing fruits in the game and this is also really good for bounty hunting or if you're getting bounty hunted I mean you can just heal back the max health in a matter of seconds and the moves for this fruit also have a really low cooldown compared to other good fruits making the ability spammable a bad thing about this fruit is that you probably don't want to use it to grind because all the abilities that do damage knock the enemies back really far that means it's going to take a bunch of extra time to grind with and did i also mention that this fruit recently got a really big nerf so it's not as good as it was i mean this fruit was broken before this when flying the speed is now reduced from 33 percent to 50 percent making it so much slower now we have the rumble fruit and this fruit costs 14,500 fragments which is cheap considering how good this awakening is. So for the first ability the player shoots out a bunch of electricity at their opponent, stunning them and immobilizing them and dealing a great amount of damage. And the second ability is a literal thunderstorm just raining down a bunch of lightning around the player. And the third ability is a concentrated amount of lightning and lightning repeatedly strikes the exact same place multiple times and this does a huge amount of damage. And for the fourth ability, we got another spirit bomb ripoff, and it's just what it looks like. You create a ball of energy above your head, and then you can slam it into wherever you choose. And last of all is the movement ability, and this is just a better version of the dash ability. You just zip across the map in a really fast speed, making it really hard for players to hit you during PvP. Bad thing about this fruit is that rubber users literally take no damage from it, so if you see a rubber user, you need to run immediately. All of the stuns for this fruit make it really good, and all the moves perfectly complement each other, making them really good to use side by side. And did I also mention this fruit is really good for boss grinding, even better than the dark fruit. A bad thing about this fruit is that to unlock all the abilities, you need so much mastery, like you're literally gonna be sitting there grinding for ages. And some of the Rumble's abilities have really long startup times, so every time you use an ability, you're in a suspended animation for a few seconds, making you really vulnerable to attacks from other players or NPCs. So you wanna make sure you have good cover before you start charging up an ability. Now we got the awakened fruit that you've all been looking forward to seeing, awakened dough. And this fruit costs 18,500 fragments to fully awaken. And the fruit has a special chip needed to start the raid and the only way you can get this is by defeating the dough king, making it the hardest fruit to awaken in the whole game. So the awakened dough fruit does have a passive ability which is called dough fist and it's exactly what it sounds like. A bunch of dough donuts just appear and they just punch your enemy, pushing them back and dealing a bunch of damage. Next up is the missile jab and a my opinion the good thing about this ability is the way it sounds it's just so satisfying and really nice to listen to and it also deals a good amount of damage next up is the pastry river and this ability has two forms if you're not standing in the air and you're standing on the ground then what it does is it just brings up a huge spike of dough and deals a good amount of damage to people in the area but if you are midair then it's a bit different it just spawns in a bunch of dough donuts and just punches your enemy into the floor but the ability where you're standing still and it brings up a huge spike spike is definitely better than the air one. Next up is actually a really cool ability. Basically what you do is you drive a donut into a player and once you let go of the ability it grabs the player spinning them around and slamming them into the floor and the effects for this ability just look really sick. 
Next up is the V ability, and this is the hardest ability to get. And this is just a dope barrage, but so much cooler, and it looks so much better as well. Compared to the unawakened version of the fruit, this looks really crazy. And now we have the movement ability, which is called Scorching Donut. And what this does is it just lets you roll anywhere you want. And when the fruit is awakened, you can even roll on water and directly up walls, making it really good for movement. A really good thing about this fruit, it's literally the best fruit in the game for PvP. The only thing that even comes comes close is the leopard fruit and this is one of the few fruits in the game that literally lets you travel by water and this fruit also has immense combo potential i mean you can literally just spam a bunch of your moves at a player and they will take a lot of damage without even being able to react to what's happening and when you use the c ability even when you're in the animation you can't take any damage no matter what they hit you with and if you're looking to gain bounty this is definitely the fruit to use and really the only downside to this fruit is how much effort it takes to awaken other than that it's literally the best fruit in the whole game.